Now this is actual tube delay. Uh, as you can see, there's a tube in there. And pretty, not super high end, but it's definitely middle to middle upper range delay pedal. Has six different delay types over here on the effect knob and then two different loop modes. All, I don't know if you can see this, but all of everything has a really good, nice click to it and feel. It's, uh, I really like it. Uh, the thing is built like a tank. It's solid, it's metal. It uh, feels like it could take a beating. I actually accidentally dropped it off my bed within three seconds of opening it. Well, directly after the unboxing bit of the video, it took a plunge off the bed and I was terrified, but it actually, there's not a scratch on it. It fell three feet on the hard tile, not a scratch. Um, the click buttons, it's not true bypass which basically means when you turn it off and on and off, it's still in the signal, but it is a low noise FET design, so it's fairly transparent, and you don't get any annoying clicks when you turn it on and off. That's kind of a, a good thing, really, in my opinion. Now, basically what it is, you have effect, you have, I think this is time, which is how fast the delay happens. You have feedback, which is how long the delay will persist on. You have saturation, which actually is very cool. That, uh, that is, the, depending on how high this is, the more signal is pushed into the tube and drives the tube, and this is bizarre, but you can actually get a very good overdrive sound off of this delay pedal. Um, usually only affects the uh, the delays, but if you set it to loop mode and you don't use the looper, it's really, really good. It's it's kind of astonishing. Uh, and then you have a level amount, which is how loud the echoes are and the, the reverb is. Uh, you have an on-off, a tap tempo. The one thing I don't like is these kind of feel mushy. They don't really sound and feel good. So you'll have to uh, kind of get used to that. Uh, aside from that, it's a pretty dang good looking pedal. Um, I guess now I'm just going to go over each effect.
Okay, what we're going to do now is mess around with Looper Mode 1. Now, the way Looper Mode 1 works is you turn the pedal on, you switch it to Looper Mode 1, the tempo button will start to flash red. You step on it once, it starts to flash fast. From that point on, it's armed. You start playing, it starts recording. Now, once it starts recording, you have seven seconds to lay down your loop. Then you can then cue back up by hitting the tempo button again. In my personal opinion, seven seconds isn't long enough, but I have found some fun stuff to do with it. Uh, namely this. At least to me, this is the most fun. Okay, so that's stored now. <sighs> and then, once that's stored, you can do this. tempo button again, it will then record something back over that in addition to what was already recorded. Now, the length of the loop is determined by it either reaching the 7 second mark or you turning it back off. Uh, for this mode, it's more useful if you play a chord progression and then play stuff over top of it. So, you're going to want to get your actual tap down correctly. Uh, I like doing stuff like this. Turn that up a little bit so you can hear. And then from there. Now, one little trick is, let's say that you're laying, you've armed it, and you're about to start playing. Oh crap, I screwed up. If you hit the off button, it won't save the loop. You can just turn the pedal back on, arm it again, and go back into playing your loop. Okay, so here's something kind of cool. That tube in the front of this pedal is not just for show. Uh, the saturation knob, actually, like I've explained before, it controls how much of the signal is pushing the tube. And this is something kind of shocking to me, because this is a delay pedal. It's all it's marketed as. A really good delay pedal. This is on the clean channel of my amp. I'll flash up the settings in a second. Tell me if this sounds like a delay pedal. This is the clean channel of my amp. Net, neck pickups. Single coils, so not even pushing hard.
Here's the bridge. Yeah, that's the cool thing about this pedal. Uh, if you set it into loop mode and then never arm the loop mode, instead of the saturation knob just controlling the amount of gain that's forced into the echoes, it'll actually just distort your sound or give you a good overdrive crunch. I really, really like it. Now, the thing is, normally the saturation, and you can have it on at all the time, but it just affects the echoes, or the delay part. I genuinely, um, I really wish, and I think they missed out, they should have put another stomp switch in the middle of this pedal, maybe made it just a hair wider, and had the saturation affect your normal signal as well, and marketed this as an overdrive distortion pedal. It legitimately would have been the best value on the market. Here, this... sweet sound. It's good. Uh, I would really use it. And I've tried a lot of the delay pedals to get that sound. The thing is, it doesn't compress the sound at all, so you still get the dynamics of your clean channel. You, you hit really hard. I mean, really soft, and you know, you get kind of, you get a real mellow tone, but you hit, really dig in, and it expands. By, it's, it's very cool. Because this actually uses the tube, 9 volts power doesn't cut it, which means two things. One, this does not come with a battery, and you cannot run it off battery power. Two, literally every other power adapter except the one that it comes with it out there does not work, including all of those power banks where you just have to plug in one and it runs your whole pedal board. Will not work. Blackstar has not released anything so far that will run multiple of its pedals, the only other power that I've even read anywhere on a remote random forum post was actually a computer uh, adapter for a laptop. And that was barely enough juice. So yeah, uh, don't lose the original one. That's about it. Although the power adapter is unruly, notice this. What you just saw was the wall wart section of it, you know, the big transformer that transforms it from AC to DC, in the middle of the cord. That means over there where it plugged in, it's just a little two prong. The best delay pedal I've ever played in my life. Um, I think analog and tape could have been done a little better. Uh, they're very good, they're very, very close. 99% of the world will never hear the difference. As it is, it's a very good pedal. Now here's the problem. The worth it price. Uh, it's $300 US. Now I got mine for about $230. Uh, stack coupons and just found good deals. At $230, it, it's like a worth it of like six or seven. It's very, totally worth it. At $300, I don't know. If you can find it for under $250, I say buy it. Pick it up. You'll enjoy it and you'll never regret it. If you buy it for the full 300 retail price, I think you've overpaid. It's, it's just a little too overpriced. Now, here's the cool thing though. Because that's a tube in there, you are going to be able to switch that tube around and get different, well, saturation because different tubes will push differently. So, in some upcoming videos, I'm probably going to throw in a, some uh, JJ Electronics. I think it's an ECC 34. I got one. I'm sorry, ECC 83. I shouldn't throw tubes like that. Um, and I'm going to see how the uh, sound is. I'll take some more samples at the time just before I do it. Uh, as always, this has been the Chapman ML1. Catch you later. Arc out.